And welcome back. Jackie Smith is on her birthday vacation, and Hans Leck is joining us in her place. Hey, it's a pleasure to wake up with you guys again today. I know I was here on Friday, but it's good to be back at again bright early on Monday morning. And, and Devin's back too now. Yeah, so. back, back from my staycation as well. Enjoyed mm -hmm. having some family up here as well. And uh, cool to see you. I saw the midday news break Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, Hans is on. So good to see you, my <laughs> <Yep>. friend. <laughs> pleasure to be here with you, Devin. Well, it's, it's a fun couch for sure today. Happy to have you guys. And let's get right into it. An unusual sight in New York City subway as Pizza Hut delivered hot pies to select customers waiting for the train. I'm hungry already just I thinking about this. I like this. It was part of a promotion for the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie due out on August 2nd. Pizza Hut has a 30-year history with the pizza-loving turtles, so on Thursday, some customers were able to get pizzas delivered in the subway by texting a turtle emoji to a special phone number. The underground delivery test was a nod to the fictional crime-fighting turtles home within the New York sewer system. Oh, yeah, I remember the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This was back when I was a kid, though, so this, this, this was many relaunches ago. Oh, but. Yeah. The cartoon, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the, yeah, the original cartoon. Though, when it was actually a lot of, I know it was a lot of good action and everything. I can't remember when the original series launched and everything, but it was. That's a good question. The, Early '80s, I believe, '84ish, maybe. Yeah, I just remember. I just remember watching them on TV growing up, and I just remember that it was. So entertaining to watch it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, as they say, I hope they saved me a slice. I actually had Pizza Hut over the weekend, and unfortunately, it didn't get delivered to me while I was on the subway. That would have been mm -hmm. fantastic. It'd be kind of hard around here. Really? What pizza did you get? Uh, you know, just classic stuffed crust, pepperoni. You gotta get that. Mm. <laughs> that's the only way to get a Pizza Hut pizza is get that stuffed crust. That's the See, best. That's the selling point. See, I don't like the stuffed crust. Oh, my goodness. I, I like the, like, garlic or, like, the classic crust or, or even thin crust but the cheese inside of it it just seems like a seems I don't know I like it on the pizza not in the crust but you like cheesy bread right no wow. wait a wait a wow. minute wait a minute sorry you, don't... you mean cheesy bread as in like when it's like the breadsticks with the cheese on top yeah. of it oh absolutely yes okay okay Come yes now sorry. we got it I thought you meant like the little like balls of dough that had the cheese stuffed into it no not necessarily okay now yeah. I, I do like that I'm not very the only thing I don't like about pizza is when you have pineapple involved afterward then you look then you lost yeah. me it's not even pineapple so much. I, I don't care for Hawaiian pizza, but it's more so I'm just not a big Canadian bacon guy. That's just not my Exactly. Thing. You prefer pineapple and pears sliced on your pizza. Absolutely. Every fruit you could possibly Every fruit. It's a fruit there. pizza. But we'll keep it moving right along. All right. Well, the white Princess Leia gown that Carrie Fisher wore in Star Wars A New Hope in 1977 is up for auction. Think it's our size? Uh, I doubt it. No? <laughs> it's estimated to sell for up to $2 million when bidding closes on June 28th. It is reportedly the only Princess Leia costume known to still exist from the original film. Costume designer John Molo created the gown and went on to win an Oscar in 1978 for his work on the film. Fisher wore the gown during the film's final scene where, while in the throne room, as she bestowed Luke Skywalker and Han Solo their medals of honor. Ooh. I remember that scene. I, I believe there was also Chewbacca, and I think R2-D2 and C-3PO also got some medals. It was a big emotional moment to culminate that movie. Fantastic motion. Picture. Absolutely. I loved Kirk standing off to the side as well. Who? <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what I said. I know, Captain but, Kirk? Yeah, that's the yep. Yeah, I remember him from Star Wars. I, yeah, you know, right, yeah. right. Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. Not Star Trek, of course. No. It's been a long time since I've seen Star Wars movies. I need to start doing so I need to we need to do some binge watching. Yeah. Yeah, Star Wars, you know, great movie series. I mean, I'm a fan of it. So. Yeah. The original trilogy especially is very well done and you know, the prequels are kind of hit or miss. I like the prequels. I think that they're I like them more than the original. I there's a lot to like there. I do generally like them, though I will say Attack of the Clones is probably my least favorite out of the franchise. Oh, when they launched Star Wars The Clone Wars or something like that? Oh, well, that's the TV show. That's, that's a totally a, different, oh, oh, that's different Oh, that's, oh, that's TV show. Okay, yeah, yeah. interesting. But the uh, the second movie, not the biggest fan, I gotta admit. How many movies have they made of, star, of star Wars? Enough to break the ice down. <laughs> Apparently they have. <laughs> but meanwhile, though, since we're talking about mm -hmm. outer space, let's keep on that topic, shall we? Stargazers are already preparing for a big event in 2020. Is that right? Oh. Who, who loves solar eclipses? Oh, I'm a big fan. Let's check this <laughs> out. Total solar eclipse will pass over Mexico, the United States, and Canada on April 8th of next year. But fans of the highly anticipated
Great Celestial Event are hoping to book their seat to view it, and some of them have started booking hotels within the path of totality. So here's your warning now. People are booking now, so that means you need to book right this second. That's the areas where you can clearly see the eclipse. The path will be about 115 miles wide, crossing 13 states in eastern Canada, and next year's total solar eclipse will be the last time Americans will be able to easily see such an event until August 2044, or in other words, when we're over 40 years old. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long wait, I tell you. Better get those tickets booked, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Hans, I'll leave you to the Airbnb booking. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you well, got it for us. I do have a fresh passport that I'm willing to right. get going, so we might as well head up to eastern Canada, hopefully uh, after all these fires are over with. Yeah, them, right? oh, right? yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or across the states as well. I know some spots across the U.S. that will get the chance to see it as well. I can't remember the exact map off the top of my head right now, but yeah. if it passes through Illinois, I may have to head down home and see it. And see, because be I've, I've seen a, a partial total, a partial eclipse in uh, my hometown before. Oh, so really? it just got dark for a little bit. It's a little bit darker now. It's kind of about it. Then it, next thing you know, it was sunny. So the, the only fascinating thing about this, so even though it's a solar eclipse for a short amount of time, I'll have to see how it affects the high temperatures for those days. Yes. That'll Speaking of temperatures, what's our forecast looking like?